Looking to take your building skills to the next level and dominate your opponents on controller? Well, you're in luck because in this video, we've got the latest tips and tricks to help you perfect your builds and become an absolute beast on the sticks. So grab your controller, sit back, and get ready to take your gameplay to new heights. Having settings that are optimal and that you're comfortable with is the first step in perfecting your builds on controller. Let's start with the basics. It is 2023, everyone. At this point, you need to be on Builder Pro. If you still use Combat Pro, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage and holding yourself back from your full potential on Builder Pro. Everyone has to make the switch at some point, so just commit a few weeks into fully getting used to it and you'll never look back. To have the most optimal blinds as possible on controller, you need to be playing with paddles or with a claw grip. Using a controller with paddles allows you to bind the face buttons on the controller to a paddle on the back, allowing you to do things such as jump and switch mode without having to take your thumb off of the right thumbstick to press those face buttons. This allows you to always have control over where your character is moving and looking, even when pressing those paddles. All of the best builders in Fortnite, like Faze Sway, Reet, Marrow, and Day, have all one thing in common. It's that they either play claw or use paddles. Their builds are always so fluent because they never have to take their thumb off the right stick to press any of their binds, resulting in full control over their builds and edits. Now, if you're looking to switch to paddles, you need to prioritize your switch mode bind and your jump bind so that your builds can be as fluent as possible. Having a sensitivity that you're comfortable with is one of the biggest parts of perfecting your builds on controller. Having a sensitivity that's too slow or too fast could be holding you back. Before we get into finding the perfect sensitivity for yourself, let's first go over what crosshair placement is and how it affects building. Crosshair placement is where your crosshair ends up during building and editing, and you always want your crosshair to be as tight as possible to make sure your builds and edits are the quickest and most accurate they can be. Having great crosshair placement comes from how much control you have over your sensitivity. Now, if you have a sensitivity that's too high or a sense that you're not used to, your crosshair may be all over the place and will result in bad crosshair placement. With that being said, let's get into how to get the best sensitivity for yourself to perfect your building on controller. Your sensitivity is all about your preference and what works best for you. If you're someone who plays better with a high sensitivity compared to a low, then stick to that. But you have to be honest with yourself. If you're constantly whiffing or over flicking edits, missing easy shots, and your builds are all over the place, it might be time to lower your sensitivity a bit. You want a sensitivity that's not too fast, but not too slow as well, so that you can have great crosshair placement, which leads to more accurate and consistent edits and builds. If you feel like you like your sensitivity and you're comfortable with it, but still miss edits and have inconsistent builds, then take a look at your build and edit sensitivity multipliers. The best build and edit sensitivity multipliers to have great crosshair placement and control are anywhere from 1.6 to 2.2. Anything over that or under will be either way too slow or way too fast. Start at 1.6, and if it's too slow, then continue to raise it until you feel comfortable. Now that your sensitivity is taken care of, let's get into how to train and and perfect your builds. Before we get into the training, if you want to become an even better player, you can access all of our courses and bootcamp content for just $7.99. And if personalized coaching is more your speed, you'll get 10% off any session with any of our pros. When it comes to improving your building skills on controller, there is no better training ground than creative. Here's why. In creative, you have the freedom to experiment with different techniques and strategies without the pressure of an actual game. You can try out new builds, test your speed and your accuracy, and see where you're making mistakes all without worrying about losing the game. This kind of practice helps you identify your weaknesses and develop good habits over time, leading to significant improvements in your skill. So let's get into the best creative maps to help you improve your building on controller and become a beast on the sticks. Other than having good settings that you're comfortable with, the most important part of being a good builder on controller is having great crosshair placement. Like we talked about before, crosshair placement is where your crosshair is during builds and edits. You always want your crosshair to be tight while building rather than loose and all over the place to make sure your builds are as quick and as accurate as they can possibly be. The best way to train your crosshair placement is through creative. This map has many different types of scenarios to help train your crosshair placement, and it's used by the top controller pros such as Marrow, Day, and Reef. While going through this map, it'll take you through different types of edits where you want to focus on going slow and being consistent, making sure your crosshair is always as tight as possible and not moving around all over the place. Same goes for building. When you go through the building scenarios that it takes you through, make sure they're not all over the place and to have fluid builds. 
The second map you want to use to train your builds is Raiders Peace Control Map version 3. This map has 25 plus drills with infinite repetitions to master peace control mechanics and to perfect your builds on controller. The map is good for players of any skill level because of how many different drills there are ranging from easy to hard. A huge part of being a cracked builder on controller is knowing how to piece control your opponent in a fight. This map allows you to go through many different in-game type of scenarios an infinite amount of times, allowing you to build up muscle memory. When you first start going through the scenarios on this map, go through them slow and try to be consistent with your builds rather than going fast and messing up. You want to focus on having great crosshair placement while building to make your builds as smooth as possible. Over time, you'll be able to ramp the speed up a bit and be quicker with your builds and edits, but also consistent. Now that you've got some piece control down as well as your crosshair placement, we're going to get into what will really make you cracked at building on controller, and that's high ground retakes and build moves. Now, everyone knows Face Sway and how he has an unlimited amount of high ground retakes, but most of his retakes come from just expanding off of the more basic retakes that everyone should learn, which we're going to go over now. Now, the third map is simply just your own island or any island that you can free build in. Like I said before, being able to free build in creative gives you the opportunity to have an infinite amount of repetitions where it does not matter if you mess up because you can just retry over and over until you get it right. With that being said, the first retake you're going to want to learn is the side jump high wall. Now, this is almost like a basic side jump, but instead of landing on the floor, you're landing on a ramp with a high wall right above you. The high wall is one of the most important builds while doing retakes because it allows you to protect against shots from your opponent and edit through and try to get peace control on your opponent as well. If you're having trouble with this, start off by just learning the side jump, landing on a ramp first before you start adding the high wall. Once you feel comfortable with that, then start adding the high wall variation. The next retake is a different variation of 90s with high walls. Now, Everyone knows doing a 90 is the fastest way to get high ground over your opponent, but doing regular 90s leaves you exposed for a few seconds, allowing your opponent to get easy shots on you. Doing this variation of a 90 with high walls allows you to always be protected while gaining high ground on your opponent, and it's very simple. The last build move is great for 1v1 starts, or if you're in a game and you and your opponent are ramp rushing each other to gain high ground at the start of a fight. You'll first do two 90s until you are facing your opponent again, and then you will put a ramp towards your opponent. Instead of running on that ramp towards your opponent, you will want to place a floor and another ramp like you're about to do another 90. Run up the side of it, jump, and connect a wall to the stair, and place another ramp, making it so that you're one layer above your opponent. Like I said before, this is a great 1v1 start because it'll always make you one layer above your opponent, giving you high ground at the start of the fight. That's a wrap. If you want to see more content on how to improve as a Fortnite player, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and also make sure to stay tuned for more skill improving videos.